Hello and welcome to day three of the our worldwide Vector online user group meeting. Hard to believe that two days have already passed. Tons of great content has been shared over the last couple of days. If you haven't seen it, then please, it's all here for you to look at and still you're able to comment and ask questions on it. So you still have lots of time to catch up on all that great stuff. Um, the, earlier, just before me, we saw Mike and his gadget demo. To tell you the truth, gadgets have always been a bit of a mystery to me, and he really did help to let me under or make me understand what they're all about and how they work. I knew they were available and where to get them from, obviously, but how to actually make one. Anyway, it was pretty interesting stuff. And what he showed was actually photo, his actual photo in the end looked really great. And I would be really curious to see if somebody out there goes ahead and tries to um, use it with the laser module and see what kind of interesting textures and so on they can come up with that that would be kind of neat so as usual i'm going to start this off with my normal thing but it's not a regular work day here it's saturday uh, my family is still around so there could be a few interruptions because we're working from home still um there's a train that's about two streets over so it may go by and if it does and if i hear it i'll do my best to try and stop talking so it's not you guys don't miss anything uh, and mother nature has graced us of a beautiful sunny day. Excuse me for the washed out wall back there, but it's a beautiful sunny day out there. There's no rain, no wind. So I, if anything goes wrong, it's all on me, right? There's nothing else. So, hey, there we go. Okay, so before we get started, full disclosure here. I have not, I can use the slicing stuff in the software, obviously. Um, but this was my first job actually setting it up to cut, actually cutting the parts and then reassembling it. So, for all of you folks out there that are watching this right now that are on our user group site in the chat, I would be really, really happy if you could throw in any extra tips you have, any thoughts you have. If I'm doing things really, really wrong and need to be set straight, jump, jump right in there and do that because I'm going to go back and look through this and I'm hopefully going to be able to learn some stuff from you guys. Um, oh, one more thing I forgot to mention earlier. First thing I did this morning when I got to my desk, I went and looked at the show and tell section of the user group site blown away blown away folks by all of you guys out there and girls that have actually shared things in that um, section of the user group site beautiful things uh, amazing stuff it really really is a pleasure to see that and thank you very much for taking the time to share those and those of you who haven't yet and still would like to you've got lots of time to do that today if you would like to so we can see what you've been up to oh and one more thing uh, I've been I've been graced by the uh, by our marketing director Stephanie that if I go over a little bit today it's going to be okay so uh, I'm going to take my time through this and um, of course I'll skip ahead a bit with the redundant stuff the stuff that's just over repetitive I guess um, but uh, if I do go a little long then hopefully you've got a coffee nearby and uh, you can start sipping on that okay so let's get into this so. Let's talk about the files that you're going to need. So yesterday, if you tuned in for me modeling um, Gary the Gorilla, um, you would have seen this guy at the end of that all done for you. Well, of course, that demonstration yesterday was only for Aspire users, but the end result is for anybody who can use 3D content in their Vectric software. So we've included in the extras pack the V3M, which is a proprietary file format for our software of Gary the Gorilla. So he's a 3D model that you can start with. So what that allows you to do is if you have vCarve Pro or vCarve Desktop, you can go ahead and, and use them and you can follow along with this demonstration. Um, and what's really good is because I'm gearing this from that point as being a vCarve Pro or desktop user bringing in this piece of 3D content. So um, uh, it should be applicable to all kinds of different 3D models uh, in your software. Now, if you have Aspire, of course, you can go ahead and work from that CR, the CRV 3D file that we ended up with. Um, yesterday, uh, you can export that out as a 3D clip file if you've decided to change it, which I hope you have taken the time to go in there and fiddle around a bit. Um, or you can use this V3M and just start from where we are. So this is geared to everybody. Sorry, cut 2D guys out there, but still, this might push you over the edge to get into VCarp Desktop. So let's talk about the things that I had to consider when I was going to go ahead and slice up um, Gary, poor Gary. Um, the first thing I need to do was to think about the final size and thickness. And of course, this is going to help me kind of decide um, how many slices I'm going to need in the end or the thickness of the slices in the end. OK, um, or or end, 
um, I need to know what kind of material I'll be using because that'll help me determine the slice thickness as well. I might have a certain thickness to an inch or having a half inch or quarter inch material and I want to make sure that my slices are that thick. So that's good to know. Um, and also, uh, it helps you to estimate the weight. Obviously, if you're going to cut something in um, MDF, it's going to be way heavier than something that's in foam, right? So if you're going to mount it on a wall, maybe MDF isn't the best. Maybe foam is better. You know, something to think about and consider. The method that you're that I was going to take and put it together. Now, again, like I had said earlier, I'm a first timer at this, so I kind of figured that dowels and pins, dowels or pins, and glue was going to going to fix all of my issues. Well. Wasn't the case in the end, I had to use a couple screws. So if I had known that ahead of time, I may have actually accommodated for those in my design, maybe marking where they would be so I knew that it was gonna be safe. Um, and Michael, uh, Michael Tyler on Monday, when he did his uh, Megalodon tooth, had a great system for showing you where to put your screw holes. And so, uh, you know, Michael, thank you for that. I'm gonna be using that in the future for sure. And then also the last thing, what my finish was going to be. And that's particularly important because um, if I was going to be using like um, Perspect or plexiglass or plastic, then maybe I wouldn't have the option of using any kind of filler. So, or I was going to be worrying about removing my tabs and how I was going to remove those, how I was going to get rid of those ugly seams that may or may not happen, whether or not I need to make my seams perfect. So in my case, I kind of was thinking I was going to be using some wood filler in the end, so I wasn't too really worried about that too much. I could fix any problems I was going to have. So once I had that all aside, then I needed to go in and start to think about how I was going to deal with Gary. So here we go. I'll have a little cup of coffee, a little sip of coffee. And we'll jump into some software. So here we are, like I said a minute ago, in a VCarve Pro. Now, you can do all of this, obviously, in Aspire. Uh, if you're going to do this in, in VCarb Desktop, then you can do the slicing, but when it comes to actually um, nesting all the parts together, you're going to need to be careful about your limitations that you have, the two foot by two foot thing, okay? So be sure that you, you figure that out, and I'm sure you, you can do that, okay? So we're going to start off by creating a brand new file, and we're going to leave off somewhere like we left off yesterday after I got done modeling. These are somewhat the same dimensions. Um, so it's a single-sided job. Uh, the width is going to be 20 by 20, and it's going to be 6 inches thick, okay? I'm using this file solely, excuse me, for slicing. This isn't going to be what I'm going to be using for cutting, so keep that in mind. We're going to jump back and forth a bit here on that. I'm not really worried about where I'm going to zero. Again, I can fix that later on. Uh, my datum, again, I'll look at that in a bit. Uh, but I do need to make sure that I have a very high modeling resolution because when this model gets sliced, it's going to be baked to the resolution that I have. And I want to make sure that I have the best density of pixels I can. And also, like I said yesterday, for the, for the end job, I'm not looking for a ton of detail because I know that I'm going to end up having to, um, I'm going to use some big bits to cut it with. But also, I'm going to need to use some wood filler and I'm going to reestablish some stuff in there anyway by hand. So anyway, very high is what you're going to want to go with. And I'm going to use a solid color again. Yesterday I talked about that when I'm modeling. I like to use a solid color. At this point, you could choose your material if you'd like to. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to stick with this tan color. And I'm going to click OK. So now we need to go to our modeling tab. We need to bring in a 3D component. So we're going to click on the eagle flying out of the, uh, the file folder. And I get a question quite often with Design & Make about this. How do I bring in 3D content or V3Ms that are maybe have ended up in my downloads folder or on my desktop? This is the little button right here you're going to want to click. Okay, so I'm going to click that. I'm going to navigate to my folder where the uh, files from the extras pack has been installed. And look at that, it's right there. It's like magic for me. It's like I've been there before or something. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna open that up. And right away, Gary's gonna end up right in the middle of my job space, which is perfect. So now I'm gonna point out a couple little things here. First of all, we have one level and there's Gary right there, Gary the Gorilla. In our layers manager, we have one layer and that's the layer that currently right now this 3D model sits on, okay? Which is perfect, that's where we want it to be. And if we tile our views, then we can go ahead and see that there's Gary. And we can turn on and off our shaded view so we can get a sense of what he looks like. And we'll turn that off for right now. Okay, so there we have it. That looks great. Now, we know we're going to slice this. Let's dive right into the slicing. We're going to make sure that we select Gary and we are going to slice him. 
Now, the first thing we're going to notice is that it tells us the model thickness and the material thickness that I defined at the first of my job setup. I'm in the UK. This is in inches. I really can't use these numbers. I'm going to need to go and change those. Okay, so we're going to close out of this for a second. And we're going to go back to my drawing tab and we're going to go to our job setup. And here now I can go ahead and switch this over to millimeters. And then I can go ahead and click OK and go back, back into my slicing again, choosing Gary. And you'll see that now I have a model thickness of 112 millimeters and my material thickness is 152. Now I had to do that because in this next section, I want to define the thickness of my models, or my, or my slice, sorry, the thickness of my slices is what I want to define here. I don't want to tell it the number of slices. I want to actually tell it the thickness. And here, again, in the UK, we're talking about 15 millimeter MDF, but I'm going to cut this out of. So I need to put in here 15 millimeters. I don't know what that is in inches, so I guess you're going to have to guess, but hopefully you're going to take this and do this on your own with your own material that you happen to have. And it tells me right away that we have eight slices and the top slice is seven millimeters. Now, if we think about that just for a second, um, that means that there's eight extra millimeters of material that I'm going to need to remove off of the top slice of this, which happens to be his nose. So also that means that I have about eight millimeters of movement that I can move Gary inside of my material in order to end up with a reasonably, you know, a, a nice sort of finish on the top. So we're going to look at that in a second. And I do not want to create boundary vectors. Um, this is a test. We want to see whether or not how our slices are going to look and whether or not we need to rearrange them inside the material so that we can avoid any tro uh, troublesome areas like thin parts or parts where detail is going to get cut off in a funny spot. So we're just going to test this out right now and we're going to go ahead and slice the model. Now this is going to be relatively quick, mainly because um, it's not defining those outlines that I told it not to do. Notice in the 3D view that Gary is quite thick now. That's because we're adding on his original, the original model. So let's just turn that off for a second. Now he's back to normal again. And then if we look in our 2D view, we have all of these slices. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now. And if you look in the 3D view, we're just going to quickly turn off all those slices and then turn them back on one at a time so that we can see what we have. So let's just go through them. There's the top slice. That's his nose. We're going to go down through it. And you'll see how we did our slicing. And there's the bottom one right there. That looks pretty nice. Now, although I turned off shadow shading, I'm going to turn it back on again just for this because we do need to, not need to, but it helps to see some of the details that I want to point out. So this bottom slice, if I was looking at this to critique it, to kind of get an idea whether this is the slice that I want, it's relatively good. It's, it's, it's looking really nice, except for this little weird bit right here, but that's not a big deal, but it may affect my next slice. So let's turn this one off and look at the next slice, the one that goes on top of it. Top of it. Um, and you'll see that right here, there's a piece by his, his head here that's a bit thin. Could be a bit of a problem spot. Also, I really don't like the way his ear kind of gets lobbed off in a funny spot right there. It might be something to look at later on. We'll take a look. Let's turn off this slice. Oh, and also I want to point out too, along the bottom of his chest here, where it's sliced, there's a really some thin area. So if we could push that up a little bit, then we'd be able to actually have a full chest piece to stick on top, which would be kind of handy. Let's have a look at our next slice. Here we go. This is a good one. Um, you'll see that he's got his shoulders here, which look really good. Uh, it would be nice if they were attached to his, his head slice. Um, but what I am concerned about, though, is his uh, chest plate here. If I, and if you look down here in the bottom of the screen right there, if I hold down my shift key while I run over top of my 3D view, you'll see I'll get the Z height of that top tip, by the way, there for you. Um, and it's obviously it's thin right there, but I'm more worried about up here how thick it is. So it's really only about uh, five and a half millimeters at the most up here. So really, that's a little thin. I would be worried that it might break or if it didn't quite look right in the end for whatever reason, then I have to do a lot of work to fix it. So if we could fix that, that would be great. If we could thicken that up a bit, that would be very nice. The next slice is his face. Looks pretty good. Nothing wrong with that, I don't think. Next one is going to be his eyes. This was a, a brilliant fluke. Um, 
because his eyes actually fit within a slice. So I'm not worried about it slicing in the middle of his, his eyeballs, which would be terrible and hard to kind of put back together and seam back up again. Nice and neat and tidy. So that worked out really well for me. This slice here, everything looks really good. I'm gonna point out this part right here. It looks really good this time around. Okay, keep that in mind. This next slice here, we've got his nose, nothing wrong with that at all, that's perfect. And then the last slice, we have here, and the only troublesome spot right here is this little thin bit at the top of his nose. Um, that is gonna be pretty weak in the end, so we might wanna look at that. So I'm not happy with that, obviously, so we're gonna go ahead and select all of those slices. Oh, one more thing I forgot to point out. At first, when, we, when I sliced this all up, we ended up getting a bunch of layers up here and all of these layers each one of these are named appropriately for the slice that's here okay so slice number one of gary that's his back slice lives on slice number one over here now when we go ahead and get the software to create the boundaries for us those boundaries will also be put on the appropriate layer for us which is really smart so just keep that in mind okay i should have pointed that out and i forgot apologies so i'm going to go ahead now and sh shift select all of these different slices and I'm going to delete them out of there. Turn back on Gary to begin with. Select him. And we're going to go over here and we're going to re-slice. Oh, sorry, no. Now we need to move him. So we're going to grab him. We're going to go ahead and modify our component properties. And we're going to add three millimeters of base height to the back of his head. So if you look up here at the back of his head, when I add in three millimeters, press my space bar, he actually gets pushed up a little bit. So that's going to move him up into my slices. So my slices, yeah, it's going to change the slices the way it's going to get sliced. It's using slices a lot, isn't it? And we're just going to click OK, and we'll look straight down at him again. And now we're going to go ahead and slice him up. Slice him again. But this time, we're going to make sure that we choose to create the boundary vectors. We're going to set this back to 15 millimeters again. Note that the top slice is now 10 millimeters. Before it was 7, so we've added 3 millimeters to that, so it's pushed it up a little bit. And so now, hopefully, we're going to not have to pocket as much on the top piece. Well, obviously, we're not going to have to pocket as much. But we're going to be able to get a little bit more relief in there as well into that slice. So let's slice up that model. Now it's going to take a bit more time because the software is going to create those vectors for us. Good time for a drink of coffee. And there we have working its magic. Again, Gary the Gorilla is showing up. Now, you probably thought to yourself, where did you get that three millimeters from, Todd? Well, because I've done this before. When I was setting this file up months ago, I tried two millimeters, one and a half millimeters, three and a half millimeters, and three seemed to be the best for me, okay? So that's why I ended up with that. Let's turn off Gary at the bottom. Now, before I forget, because I know I will, so I'm gonna do this now, I'm gonna right click on my level. And I'm gonna insert a new level, and I'm gonna rename this level slices okay and then i'm going to shift select all of these slices and even though i'm moving them up to a different level they're still going to stay on their same layers okay so i'm going to drag those up and put that in there then i can hide this one at the bottom and there we have it okay great let's look at them now let's go ahead for one second and we're going to turn off everybody but slice number one so we're going to show only this, oh, sorry, show Todd, only this, and we'll see the bottom one, okay? Ignore the 2D view for right now, the vectors we'll talk about in a second. We're more interested in what has changed in these slices. So here you'll see this slice, that little part there by his shoulder is now missing, which is kind of nice. The next one, this is a nice full uh, body now we'll see that there's no hole here in his shoulder and obviously his chest is nice and full all the way around there so that's really quite nice we've got the next bit here his his shoulders are kind of attached to his head kind of and unfortunately in the end you'll see it, I did actually break it off I, I moved it but it doesn't really matter and his chest plate if I hold down my shift key now goes from nothing all the way up to seven and a half millimeters up here which is great so i'm pretty confident that's going to survive without too much problem the next bit we're going to look at is this part which hasn't really changed much looks like it always did 
And then we're gonna look at this. Luckily with me modifying that, I didn't slice the eyeballs in the middle, which is great. It was really good. And then we'll take a look at this slice. This is the slice that I had to compromise on a bit. It's not perfect. If I had the chance to dynamically select where I wanted my slice to be, I obviously would do this a bit different, but in the end, it didn't cause me any trouble. I ended up having less problems because I had this one issue than, than leaving it the way that it was, I think. At least I feel that way anyway. But here, there's some detail in the edges of his eyes here that um, got a little thin on me, and I had to make sure it lined up perfectly when I assembled it. So, But still, it's not a bad part. This slice here, everything looks good, except for you notice that his lip is missing. And then now on this top one, we have more nose at the top of his nose, which is nice. That was what I was kind of shooting for. But yet we have this little piece of lip at the bottom. Now, when I initially saw this, I thought, ah, oh, crumbs. Um, what am I going to do? And I thought to myself, well, the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to lose it. It's going to fall to my material. It's, it's, it's just not going to work. It's going to be hard to glue on. And or um, I'll just need to build it up with some uh, wood putty or something like that and shape it back on there again. But uh, anyway, it, that didn't happen, thank goodness. So that was okay in the end. So let's turn all these back on again right quickly. So I'm happy with that slicing that we've done. Oh, and if you, if you make them appear out of order, he always looks a little bit funny. There we go. Okay, now. Next thing we need to do, now that we've got him sliced up and I'm really happy with that, we need to start thinking about how we're going to assemble him. And now, like I mentioned in my little intro there, um, this is where, first time doing this, next time around, I've got some other things I would try, but my, uh, my game plan was to go ahead and use uh, dowels and glue. And Anthony uh, was in the shop when we cut him, cut Gary, obviously, and he noticed that I panicked and had to run for uh, a drill and some screws because it didn't quite work exactly as planned. But you'll see that in a little bit. So what I did want to do, though, is put some dowels in there. So I had to think about that for a minute. Um, I only need dowels in the areas that, first of all, I can hide them. I don't want them sticking out the top of them, having to kind of blend them into him. So that means I some things I could avoid or I could ignore totally. But then also I need enough dowels to be able to position it properly. And then when it glued down, it hold well on its own. Again, could have used a couple extra dowels because I had to run around and find some clamps, which was a bit of a panic, but we did it anyway. So let's talk about where I'm going to put my dowels. So. Let's talk, let's just go ahead and look at the 2D view here. So the first thing is I don't need slice number eight. That's the top of his nose. Don't need any dowels there. So we're going to go ahead now and select slice, and I'm going to hide slice number eight and select slice number seven. Now it's really important that you keep, in, keep reminding yourself, am I on the right slice and the right layer here, okay? Because you don't want to Visually, you want to get, get it right, and you want to make sure these dowel holes fall on the right layer where they belong, okay? So I'm on slice number seven, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dowel right in the middle. Now, we happen to have 10 millimeter dowels in the uh, in the, the lab, so I use those. We're going to create a circle. Its uh, radius is going to be 10, or diameter, excuse me, will be 10 millimeters. I'm just going to click right in the middle, and then we'll just click close, and we have that right where it belongs. Now, it's on slice number seven where it belongs and are on layer slice number seven, and I actually have it here where it belongs, okay? So those are, are married up happily. Now let's just go ahead now and hide slice number seven, choose slice number six. Oh, sorry, you know what I didn't do? Was I didn't copy this. So I need to copy this dowel hole, so control C, and then we're gonna go ahead now and go to slice number six, turn off slice number seven, and choose slice number six. Okay, I don't need to do this part over here, but it's just part of my system, so I don't forget. And then we're gonna go ahead now and make sure that slice number six is selected, and we're gonna paste that in there. And there we go. Don't need any more dowel holes on this one. So just so I'm in the right rhythm, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, control C, go up to my slices, turn off number six, make sure I have number five selected, turn off number six over here, and off we go. Paste that in there. There we have it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in two dowel holes here. So I'm going to hold down my control key and my alt key and move that one up there. Again, same thing again. Hold down my shift key, grab that one. And this one, I'm going to copy that and do the same thing again. Turn off five, turn on four, go over here and turn off five and be back in here again. 
I'm going to paste these in. Nothing's going to change here again, so I'm going to copy those again. I'm just copying them. I know they're on my clipboard, but it's just to, so I don't mess it up. We're going to turn off four, turn on three, make sure we turn off four over here, and then we're, we're going to paste those in here. Again, not going to add any more. This is all great. Copy that again. Do the same thing again. Now, the next slice is going to get a little different. Here we go. Turn that on. Turn this off. You'll see in the 3D view, we have some new flat areas. We have his shoulders here and we have his chest. So something is going to sit on top of that. So I can use those now, that space, to use some dowels or put some dowel holes in there. So let's paste these in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy those. Hold down my control key and move them over here to his shoulder. And I'm just going to rotate that around until they fit. And then I'm going to use the old control to copy, shift, to flip across whichever plane we want it to, either vertically or horizontally. And we're going to click H and across they go to the other side. So we have those. Now, this is where I should have thought this through a little bit more. And I should have put some dowel holes behind Gary's chest plate that he had that would have been very smart or have indicated somewhere there that maybe I was going to put some screws in there, which I didn't do. So it did cause me a bit of trouble in the end. So if you do plan on cutting this, I would suggest that you put something there. OK, so let's go ahead now and select all of these dowel holes. And same thing as before, we're going to do the old control C. Go back up here again, turn off slice number two, select slice number one, turn off slice number two over here, and we're going to paste these into this. And there we have it. Now, I'm going to talk about these dowel holes for a second. All the rest of the dowel holes are actually going to cut right through those parts. These uh, six are not. They're only going to go halfway through my material. Um, that way, I, well, I thought it would be smart to do this. That way, I could push the dowels onto the backing and they wouldn't show out the back. In hindsight, I may or may not have been better off for me to cut all the way through. That way those dowels could just be pushed through the back side. Um, that's great. This is another spot that you could do another little upgrade to this file that um, Muhammad and Adam both, the obviously developers, um, came down while we were cutting this and said, you know what, this is going to be heavy. You probably should have gone ahead and cleared out some of that material. So I could at this point pocket out a lot of this, this chest cavity here. Um, and that way I wouldn't need it anymore, right? That would help to lighten it up a little bit. So just, you might want to think about some of those things too, which obviously I didn't think about being my first time. Give me a break. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn all this back on again now so we can see everything again. A lot of clicking going on here. And then we're also going to do this with all of our slices. Turn those all on. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about how we're going to pull this apart and uh, manually nest it onto the piece of material that I have. Take a break there. Sorry about that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we, first of all, we need to change our material setup because this, our job setup, because this obviously isn't going to work here. So let's go back to our drawing tab and take a peek at what changes we need to make here. Okay, so it's a single-sided job. We know that for sure. Um, the width is in millimeters, and the height, so that's not going to help me any because, again, being Canadian, I, I kind of ride this line between inches and millimeters. So I knew that the piece of material I had was going to be in inches. So I'm going to flip that over to inches, and I'm going to make this 42 inches by 42 inches. That was the material that I had or that I found downstairs in the labs. Now, obviously... Here in the UK, the thickness of material is in millimeters. So we need to change this back to millimeters again. So I can go ahead now and put in the material thickness, which is going to be 15 millimeters, which is what the thickness of the slices are that we made. And we can go ahead now and check the rest of this. We're going to use the bottom left. Okay. And then we are going to look at a very high resolution again. We're not going to change our scale, a design with job size. We're going to use a solid color. That's great. And we're going to click OK. Now, I had mentioned about these vectors that have been created here for us. So what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about those for a second. So if we turn off all of our slices, so I'm going to uh, right click on this and yeah, we'll go this one down here and we're going to say show only this. And let's go back up here and we're going to show only slice number one. 
you'll see that we have these two lines here that were created when we sliced it up. These are actually the profile vectors, and we're going to use these to help to define our tooling. The top of this we don't need to touch because it's the top of our material right now, right? The 15 millimeters, that's actually at the top of our surface. There's no reason we need to pocket this out or anything like that. That would be a terrible waste of our time. Um, or we don't need to surface it either, right? Again, it would be a terrible waste of our time. But in between these, there's some 3D relief that we need to cut. So by using these vectors, we can isolate our tooling so that our 3D cutter, we only use time for that for our roughing and finishing passes. We don't do everything. Okay, so that's important. And this is the same for all of these different slices. So if we look at slice number two, it's a little bit more obvious. You'll see that we have these two vectors right here, the set of vectors. And so really we only need to go ahead and cut between those. Another thing that you can think about while you're looking at this is, okay, this relief in here, the detail that's here, can I use a smaller cutter or a bigger? Do I need to use a smaller cutter? Can I use a bigger cutter for this? Is the detail really all that important? When I reassemble this, am I going to need to reestablish some of the detail in here? Is it really all, you know, I'm going to sand it out? You know, things you can think about so you can decide on how you're going to tool this up. I do know that on a lot of these pieces, I'm going to use a larger tapered ball nose. And then on the finer stuff where you saw the slices with the eyeballs in it, those we're going to use even a smaller tapered ball nose in the end to get in that detail that we want. And also it's going to save us time because we're not machining this whole chest with that teeny tiny tapered ball nose, okay? So you can time manage your project a bit by that too, okay? So let's turn these all back on again here. Drop this down, make sure these are all back on. Now we're gonna start to start to, sorry, we're gonna start to um, nest this all together. Now I'm gonna do something that's gonna be rather interesting and um, I'm actually going to make sure I turn off all of these so I don't see them. Okay, I don't want to see all of my 3D components. I just want to see my 2D stuff. And I'm going to select all of these. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to each layer. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select the vectors on that layer. Actually, I'm wrong. Sorry about that. A little hiccup there. I apologize. Turn those all back on again. And then we're going to do this. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to go ahead and move this around. I need to, <laughs> don't happen there. My total, total brain froze. So I need to move these parts around with the vectors and the actual 3D components and manually um, nest them on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I go up here. I'm going to right click on slice number one. I'm going to select all the vectors that are on that layer. And then I'll hold down my shift key and I'm going to grab this slice over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way. So that's going to be up here in the corner. We're going to maximize our 2D view just so we can get a better look at this. And we'll put that over there. Keeping in mind, I want to keep a bit of a gap around my model there. That's great. That's perfect. Now we're going to go ahead now and choose all the vectors on slice number two. And we are going to shift select the slice there. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to move that over here. We're just going to work through our slices here and do the same thing across the board. So this is going to be slice number three. We're going to select that. We're going to shift select that there. And then we're going to go ahead and move that down here where it belongs. It's perfect. Then we're going to go to slice number four, right click. We're going to select those vectors. We're also going to hold down and shift select that. And we're going to move that over here. So we're slowly just kind of moving everything around and making sure the vectors are still lined up perfectly with our relief. Do that with number five. It's perfect. And once we get them all spaced out here, we can go back in and kind of move them where they need to be in case we're not quite on. So we're going to go ahead and right click on this guy, select all those. This is slice number six. Oop, grab that, bring him over here. Okay, and then we're going to do slice number seven. And we're going to select that, do the same thing, grab this guy over there, move him down just a little bit. And then we're going to go to slice number eight. 
And we're going to right click and select all that. And we're going to shift select this guy over here. And we're going to move him over here. Now in the, the file that you're going to get, if you choose to purchase the extras pack, there's actually going to be two snouts in there. So I'm going to do that. Hold down my control key and I'm going to copy that twice in there. Why I did that was because I was a little unsure of how I was going to tab in that bottom uh, lip bit. Um, so anyway, I just want to make sure that everything jives per perfectly. So that looks pretty good. And now what we're going to do is we are going to copy all of those vectors onto a brand new layer. So to do that, we're going to hide all of our slices. We're going to select all of this. We're going to right click and we're going to say copy to a new layer. And we're going to call this profiles of the rich and famous. And then we're going to make that green. And we are going to make this new layer active and we're going to click OK. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to select that profiles and we are going to um, show only this. And there we have that there. OK. Now what's a little disconcerting is that when I turn back on my 3D components, you don't see the grayscale bitmap representations in the 2D view any, anymore. But if we take a look at our tiled view, they're still in the 3D view. Of course, as you all know, our tooling is based on what is seen in the 3D view, okay? Or the 3D tooling is, is based on what you see in the 3D view. And so even though they're not appearing in the 2D view, they are in the 3D view. So we're happy with that and everything's going to be all right. So let's go ahead and maximize that and move this over a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take all of these dowel holes and we're going to move them to their own layer. So we don't need to worry about those anymore. Get that guy there, these guys here. Right click and we are gonna move those to a new layer and we're gonna call this posts. I'm not sure why I called the dowel layer posts, but anyway I did. And we're gonna go ahead and give that a new color. We'll give it um, orange and we're gonna click okay. And we're gonna hide that one for now because we wanna talk just about this profile one for right now. So these are the vectors that in my head I'm going to use to actually um, create my tooling with. Okay, I still have all the original ones because you saw they're still, I just copied them, I didn't move them. So we still have the original vectors if I need them later. But for right now, I've got these, this copy that I'm going to work with. So they're still all grouped together. So we're going to go ahead and select all of those and we're going to right click and we are going to ungroup those. Oh, sorry, ungroup them, not group them, Todd. Ungroup onto the groups layer and everything should be now Gotta ungroup them again because I grouped everybody together. Ungroup the groups there. There we have it. Now it's all broken up for me. And we're gonna take these outside profile vectors and we're gonna offset them outwards, okay? Just the outside ones, not the inside ones. Because the inside ones define the top of our material. Okay, and we are gonna go ahead to our drawing tab and we're gonna offset those out. The diameter of my tool are a little bit bigger and um, Michael Tyler showed you this when he was doing his um, Megalodon tooth. I keep wanting to say Mastodon tooth, but Megalodon tooth um, on the first day. And uh, this, is, this is great. So we're gonna go ahead and off, offset that outwards. Oh, this is set to millimeters. I'm so sorry, we needed to undo that. And I had forgotten a little while ago, we need to switch this back to inches again because some of my tools are in inches. So let's go back over here to my tab here and I'm gonna switch back to inches for a sec. Boop. So you'll see that these will be put back to 42 and there is our 15 millimeters in inches. And there we go, sorry about that. So let's just do that again. Let's select all these outside vectors here. I'll re say to Michael that thank you for that because this is shows people how to use 3D tabs and then actually going ahead and cutting through the material or what he calls piercing through a pierced cut. I do, uh, sorry, there we go. Now it's set to inches. There we go. Outwards that, that's perfect. We are going to delete our original ones and we are going to offset that. Close that down. And there we go. Oh, now you also see I made another little error there. They should have landed on the, not the post layer, they should have landed on the actual profiles layer. So we're gonna undo that. 
And if that does happen to you, this is a kind of a convenient mistake that I made. I wish I could say I did that on purpose, but I didn't. We're going to make sure that we have profile selected, turn off our posts. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and do that again. You guys are getting a good lesson in how to select vectors from me. Here we go. Now, Todd, let's do this right. Outwards, we're on the profiles layer there. Level, looks good. Uh, outwards, quarter of an inch, delete the original, offset. And there we go. That's what I was expecting like three times ago. Okay, let's close that down and off we go. So now what we're going to do is if we take a look at our 3D view, we have the vectors that we need. These are offset outwards just a little bit. So to kind of show you what I, why I did that is that if we look at slice number, uh, let's look at slice number five here, this guy right here. We've got, we're going to machine from this vector to this vector. And so we're going to get all that nice 3D detail there. And then we're also going to overshoot a bit so that we're actually going to see through our material or that's the, that's the game plan is to see through our material in the end. Um, so let's turn that back off again and back up again. Zoom back out again. Okay, so there we have that. That's perfect. Let's turn it back on our posts. And now what we're going to do is we need to start to think about how we are going to um, tab this in there. Okay, so again, Michael Tyler taught me something on, didn't teach me something per se, but made me aware, more aware of something than I was before. That when I'm choosing my tabs, we have different thicknesses and, and shapes and sizes that we can choose from. I always just chose the same one. Um, hey, I learned something, which is great. That's what this is all about, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my, uh, we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to call this tabs. So we're going to rename that. We'll call that tabs. And then we're going to color that. It doesn't really matter what color we have. Really, it doesn't in the end. Green. And then we are going to make sure that's selected. So when we bring in our 3D component for our tab, it will actually land on the right layer like we want. Okay, so this is the one I usually choose. In hindsight, though, I would have used one of these flat ones, Mike. That would have made my life a whole lot easier in the end, way less sanding. Anywho, so we did, we did use these. So I'm going to double click on that. One comes into the... Um, uh, the, the 2D and 3D view. You can see it here in the 3D view, but I can't see my relief here because it's all on, it's all hidden right now. So what I'm going to do is I want to maximize my 3D view and we're going to work right there from there. Okay. So here I've got my little tab. And so now I can decide where I want to put those tabs. Okay. I need to make sure that it actually it's on its own layer as well here. Okay. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to create a new level, excuse me going to drag that guy up there onto that level so that he can he'll be there for me I can hide and show them when I want to it's kind of convenient that way let's select him and then I can kind of put the tabs where I want them to be now Michael had a really good um, suggestion was to put them against walls that are nice and sharp um, and if you're going to put one where there's where there's not a whole lot of relief then you might want to actually squish it and that's what I did so I slowly went around this whole thing I'm not going to bore you with that and place those where they are. And if you take a look at side by side here, you can see there's my 3D tab right there. It's actually inside my actual component and I can go ahead and put them in the places that I think needs them. Okay. Especially in here along the edge of his chest and to, to attach his a bottom lip with his nose. So I'm not going to bore you with me going through all of that. So we're going to hop over to a new file. And this is the file that you're going to get if you purchase the extras pack. And of course, like all of our files, when you open it up, you're going to get this warning. And this is an important warning because there is tooling in here. And you most definitely are going to want to adjust the tooling for your setup so that everything is safe and appropriate for your use. And of course, you're super safe. So we'll click OK past that. And then let's have a look at our 3D view and see what we have in the end. So I'll point out a couple things here that weren't quite so obvious at first. Um, one was that I took my tabs down here and I squished the shape height so they're a bit thin. So when they ran into his chest plate, then um, there wasn't a whole lot of work for me to try and sand those out. Um, I put these two guys right here. I had chose two different kind of um, tab positions here 
in case one worked better than the other. Ultimately, I went with this bottom one here. To, it worked really well. Um, and everything else, all those tabs worked out really good. Although they look a little thin, they did hold it in place. And as Mike said yesterday or Monday, or the, not Monday, the first day, um, that with that little bit of membrane that was left behind, everything was kind of held in place perfectly. And this is the point that I may have considered putting in my 2D view some spots where I could actually screw my material down that would miss um, my part, which I didn't do. And um, I had to just kind of guess, which worked out fine in the end for me. I actually had to add a screw because the MDF bent a bit, but we'll get to that in the video. So let's have a look at the actual tool paths for this, okay? Let's look at our views here. I'm gonna turn me off here. So you're gonna have uh, five tool paths. We're gonna start off with the first one, okay? And as I mentioned, that's gonna be these top dowel holes here in the, the back plate or the back slice. And they're, they're gonna start at zero. They're only gonna go down 10 millimeters. And as you remember, the thickness of our material is 15 millimeters. So um, it's not gonna go all the way through. Again, I might change. I might have changed that in hindsight. <clears throat> um, it's gonna be offset tooling. We're using a slight pocket allowance here, so the hole is slightly bigger than what I need for my dowel. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and calculate that, excuse me, and we'll preview that visible toolpath. And there we have it. Okay, that's really not all that fancy. There's no wow factor there. Let's take a look at our next one. And these are going to be the rest of our dowel holes, which are going to start at zero and go all the way through, plus a little bit. I wanted to make sure they broke out the back. Using that quarter inch end mill again, we're going to use the offset tooling. Again, we're going to make those holes a little bit bigger with a negative allowance. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and calculate those. It tells me we're going to cut through that. That's okay. And we are going to preview the visible tool path. There we go. Again, nothing too crazy. We're going to do our roughing. We're going to rough between those vectors that we have set up here. Okay, so we're going to rough all those. And we're going to use that quarter inch end mill again. We're going to use selected vectors, no boundary offset. You can use a slight machining allowance of, of one millimeter. When I set up this tooling, I must have been in millimeters. So that's why it's like this, but don't worry about that. It all gets sorted out in the end when you save it off. Um, we're going to use Z-level roughing. That's great. And we've got it named properly, and we'll calculate that. And we'll preview that visible tool path. And that's exactly what I had expected. If it didn't turn out that way, then of course I could go back and fix that. This is our first tapered ball nose toolpath. Okay, that's going to be this area here. This is the bigger one of the two. That way I could speed things up. Okay, there we are right there, our tapered ball nose. Use the selected vectors. Um, we are going to use offset tooling again on those now. Um, at first, I did use raster for this particular toolpath, and around these bigger parts, it ended up doing a lot of this back and forth thing which was really not what we wanted to have happen. Um, I mentioned, we, so we cut two of these in the end, and um, I mentioned that to Mohammed and the development team, and uh, he suggested that I should use the offset tooling instead. So I did, and you'll see that in the video in a second. We'll go ahead and calculate that. It takes a second to calculate it. And then we'll go ahead and we'll preview that visible tool path. And there we have it. I was happy with the detail there, so I didn't have to go in with a smaller um, tapered bull nose. I was really happy with that in the end. So let's close that down. And this is the last one. This will do all these extra highly detailed areas with the smaller um, tapered bull nose, selected vectors. This is all done and all the same as before. Nothing, nothing has changed. Calculate that. It'll take a second to do that. Time for a drink of coffee. And then we're gonna go ahead and preview that visible tool path and off we go. So let's maximize that and have a look and see what we have. That all looks really good. You'll see that our bull nose is cutting through in a few areas. So if our setup on our machine is correctly, we, we may have a very fine or, or small thin skin of material around the outside of our actual part, which isn't a bad thing in the end. Um, but everything looks pretty decent. Oh, sorry, I went and put away that. There we are. Everything looks really good there, and I'm happy with that. You can see where we've broken through. 
So now, this next little section is a pre-recorded video that we did, and I did a little voiceover, so some of the stuff might be a bit repetitive. But it does show you the whole cutting, sanding, finishing, and then what we end up with in the end. So let's have a quick look at that. Yeah. Of course, we have to start off by screwing down our MDF to the table. We cut two versions of this, and in the second version, I actually added in a couple more screws. I noticed that as we were cutting this, it started to bow a little bit, so my parts ended up not cutting all the way through. Using the quarter inch end mill, we went through and we cut all of the dowel holes. Now we're gonna use the same quarter inch end mill to do our roughing pass. Now I thought using this MDF was a smart idea. That way I wouldn't have any warping or any funny grain because I was gonna end up painting this in the end. Um, but as you can see, our dust extractor wasn't quite strong enough to remove the dust. So I really couldn't tell what was going on until the end when I used our vacuum to suck up all the dust. Now one thing I would change is this. At the end of each of the levels of, of the roughing pass, I did a profile cut. I probably could have taken that out of the tool path to save me some time. And here we go, vacuuming up all that dust so we can see the end result of the roughing pass. And that looks pretty good. In, go, in goes the tapered ball nose, and we're gonna go ahead and do our finishing pass. Now this took a while, and again, because the dust wasn't getting extracted like I wanted it to, you really couldn't see a whole lot until the very end. Now some of these parts, I could have changed the way that I ran the tool path. I decided to use a raster for the first Gorilla, and it ended up taking a lot of time, and the actual edges of my thicker pieces, like the two back pieces of the slicing, didn't turn out quite as nice. So I opted to go with the offset tool the next time around, and that gave me a quicker tool path and also gave me a nicer edge to those pieces. And it was really great when I got a chance to hoover this all off or vacuum it all off and to see this thing actually look like it's coming to life. Took a bit of time to cut these all out. I had to use my carpet knife, and one of them didn't quite cut all the way through. So it took a little bit of guesswork to figure out where I was going, but the other one worked out seamlessly. So this is the one that had the best kind of edge to it. There was just a little tiny bit of a film around the edge of MDF, and it just came off really easy with the carpet knife. I slowly worked down through all the parts and removed that little bit of film around the edge. It's really quite satisfying to see this thing finally come together and being stacked up in the real life. Now I did leave on the next part, you'll see the tab that holds the snout to the actual lip. And I'll remove that a bit later. And here are the two different versions. Now these took an incredible amount of sanding to get done. Our little sanding machine worked like a champ through the whole thing. This is me re removing a couple stubborn tabs from the breastplate. And then of course me going around that snout. Now the glue up didn't go quite as well as I would like. These dowels fit in there really tight, so I had to use a rubber mallet. I probably could have used a bit more glue, and I wasn't planning to use the actual clamps to hold it together. And unfortunately, I needed to do that, so there was a bit of a panic rush to find all the clamps I could to stick it together. There was one little gap there that you can see. That's not a big deal in the end, because we're gonna fill that with wood filler and sand it down, and it should look perfect in the end. Now for a few of these layers, we decided to try to use a screw to hold it down. Oh yes, and also my dowels are a bit long, so I had to cut the tops off them. And you'll see in a second one of those screws, right there in this chin. 
adding all the layers together with the glue. Adding a little extra glue this time around because it didn't add quite enough to the first couple layers. And then in a couple spots I had to use some clear tape to hold the parts down. I was really quite happy with it in the end and it was good to see it coming together. Again, a little bit more sanding around the edges to make sure the parts marry up fine. And then here I go with the old finger method, adding in the wood filler. It was a lot to add in and we left it over the weekend to dry. And here I am removing that piece that holds the snout and the lip together. Tons more sanding. And you'll see me in a minute using a handheld Dremel, battery powered Dremel that I had with a rechargeable battery. And it worked really quite nicely to get into some of those spots that were hard to get into. Lots of sanding. And you could do this literally, I think, for days. We spent a couple hours sort of working over everything and making sure things looked as good as they could. We had to stop at some point. And then I decided that we should add in a layer of sand and sealer on everything. And this is the second gorilla that we haven't seen much of, but you'll see him in a second. We decided to paint him so that you could tell that he was being layered up or where his layers were for the slicing had happened. This is the gorilla that we've done all the work on, all the body fill work, and the paint went on quite nice. And you can't really tell where the seams are unless you look real close. A couple layers of paint. And then when it dried, we mounted it on the wall. And it looks really, really nice in the end. And then here's the sliced version, so you can see where all the slices were. Well, first of all, I have to thank Anthony, our videographer, for that. He did a fantastic job putting that all together and making it. He spent the whole time with me and was super helpful when it came to putting this thing together. So thank you, Anthony. So here we go. This is uh, Gary in his matte gray finish, which is really quite neat. And then we have uh, Gary in his sliced version. Now, if you remember, if you if you were involved in the or stayed around and watched the um, the modeling chat that I did yesterday, the modeling presentation I did yesterday, we talked about this was supposed to go to Maker Central with us, and the idea was that we'd have the um, the multicolored version of them available there, so kids could come around and re put them back together and kind of understand how the slicing works. So we thought we'd just simulate that here with this. So let's talk for a second about the files that you're going to get um, if you do buy the extras pack. So you're going to get the first three files that are listed there. They they're came from yesterday's presentation. So you can take the vectors that I have, create your own shapes. You can take my shapes and you can go ahead and see how they were made. And then you can go ahead and sculpt that together. And you can see how all that works. So you've got those three files if you have Aspire. Now from this demonstration, you're going to get the uh, the sliced.crv file and the nested-tooling file, but for everybody, the gorilla.v3m will work perfectly. And what's really great about this is I hope that you take these and you create something really cool. And, and Anthony had mentioned that wouldn't it be nice if we had to turn this into a headphone holder? I think that'd be great, a Gary the Gorilla headphone holder. So I'm challenging somebody out there to go ahead and take this model and do exactly that. Well, Thank you very much, and you can see what we came from. We have the sculpted um, Gary and then his finished thing in the end, and I have to say that I'm really quite proud of this one. It turned out really well. Learned a ton, and like I said, I hopefully when I go back through the chat after this is done with, um, I'm going to get lots of more pointers from that. So uh, anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for joining in. Up next is going to be Tim Sway, and I have a... Tim, Tim is, is a great inspiration for me. I love what he does and the things that, he, that he's working on right now. And currently, he's working on his um, Jambulance, which is kind of a neat project. And the project he's going to share with you is how to create a small little miniature version of that, which is great. A little personal note from me. Um, uh, those of you that normally I would meet at, uh, at a user group meeting face-to-face, -face, uh, hopefully next year we'll be able to get together and shake hands. That'd be fantastic. Um, so from, from me, from all of us here after this presentation, um, I hope you guys are still having fun. Hope you're still making incredibly great things 
And most importantly, we really do want you guys all to be safe, okay? So until next time, we'll see you later, and maybe next year, we'll see you in person, okay? Thanks so much.